Hi everybody, it's the History Teacher. In this episode, we'll look at the founding of the original 13 British colonies in North America. Queen Elizabeth I never married and was called the Virgin Queen. In her honor, the first British North American colony was named Virginia. There had been attempts to settle Virginia in 1584, 1585, and in 1587, but these efforts all failed due to inadequate preparation. But in 1607, ships carrying 104 men landed about 40 miles up the James River and established what would become the first permanent English settlement. They named it Jamestown in honor of the current monarch, King James. The settlement expedition was a project of the Virginia Company of London. Like today, people invested in the company by purchasing stock. And like today, the job of the Virginia Company was to reward its investors with big profits. For almost a century, the Spanish had been hauling shiploads of gold and silver from their conquests in Mexico and South America. The British hoped to have the same experience in North America, and making that happen was the job of the Virginia Company. So, Virginia was founded to make money for wealthy investors, which included the king, and to get a British foothold in North America. Massachusetts was founded by two Protestant groups seeking religious freedom. One was the Puritans who, as their name implies, wanted to purify the Church of England of what they perceived as Catholic beliefs and practices that had been lingering since the English Reformation some 70 years before. The other group was the Separatists who, as their name implies, didn't just want to reform the Church of England, but instead wanted to separate from it entirely. Religion was a troublesome topic in this era, and both groups stirred unrest in English society. So when they asked King James to allow them to migrate to North America, he was happy to let them go as far away as possible. In 1620, the Separatists, called Pilgrims, boarded the Mayflower and intended to land just south of the Hudson River, where they had been granted land to settle. But storms blew them to Cape Cod and, weary from their long voyage and concluding that God brought them there, decided to settle where they landed. A decade later, King James authorized the Puritans to settle in North America. In 1630, they landed near Plymouth Colony and established Massachusetts Bay Colony. Eventually, these colonies merged into the single colony of Massachusetts. Just as the Puritans fled England to escape religious intolerance by the English authorities, some people fled Massachusetts Bay Colony to escape religious intolerance by the Puritans. One of them was Roger Williams, a Puritan preacher whose unorthodox religious views made him unwelcome in Massachusetts. In 1636, Williams traveled south to the Narragansett Bay, purchased land from the native tribes, and founded Providence, a colony which welcomed people of all faiths and which rapidly grew. Providence was combined with neighboring settlements into the colony of Rhode Island in 1644. Similarly, the colony of Connecticut was founded by a religious refugee from Massachusetts Bay Colony. In 1636, Thomas Hooker's religious disagreements with the Massachusetts Puritans drove him and some followers westward to the Connecticut River, where they founded Hartford. In 1667, Hartford and the nearby colony of New Haven were combined to form the colony of Connecticut. New Haven had been founded by John Davenport, yet another unhappy resident of Massachusetts Bay Colony. The land comprising New Hampshire had been part of Massachusetts. But recognizing its significant population and its geographic distance from Massachusetts authorities, in 1779, King Charles II granted a charter to the territory and thereby created the separate colony of New Hampshire. The colony of New York was originally called New Netherlands because it had been established by the Dutch in 1624 based on the 1609 explorations of Henry Hudson. New York City was called New Amsterdam, and the Dutch settled there to engage in the profitable fur trade with Native Americans. In 1664, England sent a fleet to conquer New Netherlands, and that was accomplished without a shot being fired. The people of New Netherlands were focused on trade and business and really didn't care who governed them. The admiral in charge of the fleet was King Charles II's brother James, Duke of York. The king had granted his brother title to New Netherlands, and so the colony was renamed New York. Later in 1664, James granted the lower section of New York to two of his friends, John Lord Barclay and Sir George Carteret. The lower section was reorganized as the colony of New Jersey, where settlers occupied themselves with trade and farming. The land that became Pennsylvania was granted to William Penn in 1681 by King Charles II in repayment for debt owed to Penn's deceased father. William Penn was a member of the Society of Friends, commonly called the Quakers, supposedly because they feared God so much that their knees shook or quaked. Like other religious dissenters, Quakers were harassed in Britain. Penn intended Pennsylvania as a place where not only Quakers, but people of all faiths, could reside peacefully. Further, 
William Penn insisted that Native Americans be treated with respect and that any land acquired from them was purchased and not stolen. The colony of New Sweden had been established by the Swedish as a trading colony in 1638. But in 1655, the Swedish were ejected by the Dutch, who had nearby settlements on the Delaware River. The Dutch, in turn, were ejected by the British after the conquest of New Netherland, and the former New Sweden became part of the grant to William Penn. Penn later allowed the lower portion of his colony a separate legislature. In 1776, that lower portion became the separate colony, and very soon state, of Delaware. Catholics were generally disdained in early 17th century England. George Calvert, Lord Baltimore, although a Catholic, was also a firm supporter of King Charles I. In reward for his loyalty, King Charles granted Baltimore land just north of the Potomac River in 1632. Baltimore died soon after, but his son, Cecilius, inherited the grant and proceeded to establish the colony of Maryland, named after King Charles' wife, Queen Henrietta Maria. Maryland was intended as a haven for Catholics and other Christian minorities. In 1663, King Charles II expressed his gratitude to eight noblemen who helped restore him to the throne of England by granting them land between Virginia and Spanish Florida. The colony there was named Carolina in honor of the king. Over time, the northern and southern parts of the colony grew distinct, and it was divided into North Carolina and South Carolina in 1712. In 1732, a group of philanthropists, led by General James Oglethorpe, obtained a charter to form a colony between South Carolina and Spanish Florida. The colony was intended as a home for debtors and other poor people so that they could avoid debtors' prison and get a new start in life. Unfortunately, that noble cause didn't result in a successful colony, but that was the origin of Georgia, named after the reigning King George II. Okay, so there you have the founding of the original 13 British colonies in North America. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.